I'm not sure if you fucking miss me, but I'm back. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Henry. Have you guys missed me? I was like on a break. I have absolutely no clue how this channel still grows because I, I haven't uploaded any content like in within a month. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Honestly, I'm so thankful to have you on this channel. First of all, there's no excuse for my break. I have to be honest, I was just lazy. I was planning like a break for one week or like two and then come back with a video. But out of these two weeks, it got like a month. So um, now it's finally the time I'm back actually. And I'm, I've prepared something very cool because I was like thinking, when I come back, I have to come back with something lovely for you guys. And I know that you guys really like these crocheting tutorials I do. So I'm back with a crocheting tutorial for you guys. And I think it's pretty exciting. And I can't wait to share with you guys. Okay, what I'm actually talking about is this. Okay, let me put it on. Okay, but that's not it. Like, come on guys. This is so cool. It gives me like this kind of skater vibes. I kind of like topping a long sleeve shirt with a normal t-shirt. Having crocheted sleeves is so cool. How I did this, I'm gonna show you right now. Regarding the materials, it's super easy. We only need our crochet hooks. I'm using a normal hook, which is five millimeters. And I'm using the normal DK light worsted yarn by Schachenmeier. It's called Bravo in different colors. It depends on which color you want to use your basic t-shirt. I'm using brown, so I've used the brown as a basic color for my sleeves. I'm using three balls of brown. The rest of the colors are only used one ball each of the colors. Obviously what you need is um, a long sleeve as well. I'm I'm wearing like a large, I guess, because I like to have it more oversized. And what else you're gonna need is of course a scissor, some wool needles or like normal tapestry needles. And of course, um, I always forget it actually, you need a hand sewing kit. And without further ado, let's jump right into crocheting process. <laughs> We're gonna start with the round granny patch. We are going to start with our desired color, take our crocheting hook, and we are going to do a simple slip knot. And then we chain up six. When we have chain up six, we are going to go back to the first loop of our first chain and we are going to slip stitch through the first loop, building a little circle, which is our center part of our granny square. After this, we are going to chain up two, which is our first post. And then we are going to do a double crochet into the big center loop in order to create our second post. And we are going to need for the whole first circle 19 posts. How is the double crochet working actually? Um, you are going to yarn over, then you go back into the first big loop, then you yarn over, you have three loops on your hook, then you yarn over, pull the yarn through the first two loops, you have two remaining loops on your hook, and then you yarn over again and you have done your double crochet. And that's how the process of a double crochet is working and you're going to repeat this 19 times. All right, as soon as we have done the first round circle or I finished the 19 posts, we are going to connect the 19th post to the first post by doing a simple slit, slip stitch. After this, we are going to continue with the second row, which is a little bit trickier, but still like easy. Um, we are going to chain up two again, and then we are going to double crochet in the next loop um, once. After this we are going to chain up two again and then we are going to double crochet in the next loop of our round little circle. And one loop of our round little circle is always containing out of two strings. So if you loop or double crochet into that loop, make sure to double crochet in both strings, like having both strings on your hook. After this, we are going to double crochet again into the next loop of our little round circle in the middle. And then we're going to continue this whole process until we hit the first double crochet we did. And we are going to continue finishing up and closing our second round by closing up the last post with the first post again by slip 
stitching in. As soon as you have finished the second round, we are going to go to the third round, which is the last round for our patch. And um, for this, we are going to chain up two. And now you can see like with each of the two chain ups you did between your double crochets, there's a, like a big hole building. And what we are going to do is we are going to double crochet into that big loop we've just created with the two chain ups of the last row twice then we are going to chain up two again and then we are double crocheting twice in the same loop again we just go directly into the next big loop which is coming up next and double crochet twice into that loop then we chain up two and then we are going to repeat the process around the circle when you add the end you make sure that you double crochet in the big last loop twice of course then you chain up two and then you double crochet only once in that last loop on the first chain up you did at the beginning is your last double crochet actually of your last pattern and that's why we are going to slip stitch into the last or our first chain up um, in order to finish up the whole patch. And that's actually it. So what we are going to do right away after finishing the patch is we are sewing in the axis yarn in order to finish up the whole patch and have it nice and clean. So what we are going to need is actually, you can play around with different colors. So what I did is I have different patches in one color, but I also have multicolored patches like this. I started with a pink and then I finished up that one circle and afterwards I just attached the next color by simply adding it by a simple knot and then I finished it up with another color and so you can do that either way on all of the patches but I was a little bit lazy so I only did it to a few patches and I still like it. Okay, regarding our second sleeve, actually, I decided to pick a different multicolored, only multicolored granny square patches. I really like how they look like. So what's important, I always ended up with my basic color at the last round of our granny square. And for this, it's actually also pretty easy to do. So you only have to be familiar with a magical ring. If you're not familiar with that, look up some tutorials on how to create the magic ring. We are starting with the granny square patch with like the center part. And for this, we are going to chain up two, which is counting as our first post. In order to get three posts, we are going to half double crochet, not double crochet, into the magic ring twice in order to get our three posts. So how is that half double crochet working? You yarn over first, then you go down into your loop or like into the magic ring, yarn over and you have three loops on your hook. And now comes the difference to the double crochet. You yarn over and pull the yarn through all three loops. You're gonna repeat this once more in order to get three posts. So after these three posts, it's very, very important to build the edges of our patch. And since our patch is squared, we're going to need four corners actually. And we are going to um, chain up three. After these three chain ups, we are going to repeat the process actually by dub half double crocheting three more posts again into the magic ring. Then we are going to continue chaining up three again for the second corner actually. Then we are going to add three more posts. Then we are going to add three more chain ups and then we are going to add the last three posts of half double crochets and the last three chain ups in order to build our little square and then in the end we are going to pull our ring tight by the axis yarn in order to shrink it and have this little tiny square. We are simply slip stitching the last three chain ups into the, our first post. So if you choose to change the color, you have to make sure to finish up your patch, of course, uh, by simply chaining up one and then pull the yarn through, cut it and maybe already sew it in if you want to, or you can do it later as you finish the first patch. And then we are going to attach the new color by simply tying a knot to one of the like little corners we are going to start. As soon as we attached the new color to our one of our corners, we are going to chain up two and then we are going to double or half double crochets three posts. So the first chain ups are counting as posts again. So we are going to the half double crochets two more posts in order to get three posts. 
into that same corner and then we are going to add the next corner of course by chaining up three again and then we are going to half double crochets three more posts into that same corner again and then we are going to chain up one for that edge actually and then we are going to jump into the next corner by half double crocheting three posts into the next corner then you continue that process by chaining up three then you add three half double crochet posts in that same corner and then you chain up one for the edge and then you jump into the next hole and continue working half double crochets three posts in one of the corners then add three chain ups and then the three half double crochets again as soon as you have finished the second row we are going to continue with the third row then you're going to add the next color of course again at one of the corners i can fully recommend you chain up two and start the whole process but now we have added a another post or another stitch to one of the edges so the corners are like the same exact process and we add one chain and then we are going to go into that new hole which is building up the edge of our patch and we start doing the same process actually by half double crocheting three posts only into that one hole then we are chaining up one and to continue to the next hole which is our next corner actually and then we are continue the whole process by completing the third row and at the end it's the same process actually you just slip stitch the last post to your first post chain up one and finish up the patch so now comes our last row it's actually the same process now we have two more gaps in between two of the corners and you're increasing the whole patch by each row actually and make it bigger as soon as you have finished that last row you obviously yeah slip stitch the last post to the first post chain up one and that's it at first it looks kind of complicated as soon as you get the hint of how it's been working it's super easy <laughs> In order to build like a sleeve, it is very very important actually that you that you are familiar that a sleeve is going big. The patches have to be bigger at your shoulders than they have to be at your wrist. Also stated in that manual actually is you have to increase your patches. So in order to increase this, it is simple at these square patches to just add another row to your last nine patches You're going to need 18 patches for this sleeve but nine patches needs to be small and the patch part which is also nine patches leading to your shoulder needs to be a little bit bigger so i decided to just add another row to that patch in order to make it bigger so the same process or the same problem we also have on this sleeve of course in total you're going to need 21 of the big patches like the big round ones and as you can see i've added like little small circle patches in between to fill up the gaps of the pattern and for these gaps in the pattern you're only going to need how many i forgot you're gonna need 14 of the small little circle patches so in in order to get the sleeve you're going to follow that manual i'm gonna blend in here after nine patches i'm going to increase like my sleeve by just adding four patches and getting rid of the in-between gaps for this kind of part and just adding four round patches into the gaps of our three patches and then we are just continuing the same process actually by just adding eight more patches and having these little gaps filled with the little circles again so you can see this all in the manual and how it's been like done so what we are going to do next is assemble all the patches you're going to order or lay them down on a big space actually i did that on my table and then you just start actually by assembling them using a single stitch there are two possibilities to connect them you can either sew them together with your tapestry needle and just a normal yarn but i've made the experience that when i sew them together they always tend to get loose or open up again after a while so i decided to single stitch them together so what we are going to do we are attaching our yarn to one of the patches by just tying a knot then we sandwich one of the patch two of the patches actually together 
and single stitch only one of the edges actually there's like a seam then it's building a, like a single crochet seam so the seam needs to be put inside at the end so you have the outside which is nice and clean and the seam in the inside so after that if you have done all or connected all the patches together you have like a whole like looks like a blanket or somehow and then you close up the sleeve and turn it around the round circle one is a little bit more tricky but it's working like the same process uh, regarding the second sleeve actually it is very very important that you sandwich your patches together and uh, make sure that the seam is in the inside and not looking for the outside and that's like a little bit tricky but if you follow the manual on how where to put the patches it should be possible this takes a little bit like longer than the other one when you are done by connecting all the patches to the sleeve you obviously want to try it on and check if it's like long enough and stuff like that and then you're gonna add it to your long sleeve and the adding process is pretty simple actually you just define where you want to have your shoulder part and where you want to have your pit part and then you are going to attach it by hand sewing them to the other sleeve make sure to stitch them very tightly and of course use pins that's basically it and when you are done you have this beautiful nice looking unique looking long sleeve which you can top either with a t-shirt or just leave it like this as you want to guys like this little tutorial i'm very very excited to be back on a youtube channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet if you're new here feel free to subscribe at least right now please feel free to give it some thumbs up if you like the video subscribe to the channel for more diy videos in the future and if you haven't checked me out on my social media yet i've shared tons of other diys on my reels on instagram on my tiktok on my pinterest so feel free to check them out and yeah, I can't wait to be back in the next video. I love you guys. I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye. I'm out. Ciao.